Um, my favorite two statins uh, for the treatment of cholesterol are Lipitor and Crestor. And I find more people tolerate Lipitor. Congratulations to the Pfizer Corporation. They consistently develop products which tend to cause less reactivity. It was found in two studies the following. Number one, if people were on Zocor or Simvastatin, which is the generic statin, compared to Lipitor, there were fewer people who stayed on the Simvastatin compared to those who were staying on the Lipitor. Now, does that mean that Simvastatin has more effects? Well, they, this, it, I think so. There are definitely more interactions with Simvastatin than there are with Lipitor. Lipitor is a much safer drug from the drug reaction interaction standpoint than is uh, Zocor, uh, Simvastatin. It was also found that when patients were switched from, uh, this is a separate study, switched from Lipitor to Zocor, uh, fewer people stayed on it. So just compared to when the groups were the same and when they were switched from one to the other, uh, there were fewer people adhering. As a matter of fact, switching statins of any type is associated with a lowered incidence of adherence. I recommend that all my patients get home blood pressure cuffs who have high blood pressure. And the one that I recommend is the Omron wrist blood pressure cuff. Every now and then I will find one that's not accurate, but in general, they are quite accurate. And I like people checking their blood pressure in what I call the nine time zones of the day. You only check it once or twice a day, but in these nine periods so that you're a little bit organized. Before and after each meal is six, then middle of the morning, middle of the afternoon, and bedtime. So one day you might do before breakfast and after lunch. And the next day you might do after breakfast and before dinner. And the next day you might do middle of the morning and middle of the afternoon. And the next day before lunch and bedtime. And so on and so on. So that over the course of four or five days, I can see what your blood pressure is all day long. Now, what about taking it at night? Nobody's going to get up to do that, so I don't recommend it. But taking your blood pressure medication at nighttime is a very good idea, unless it contains a water pill that wakes you up to go to the bathroom. So I really do recommend that people take their blood pressure medication at night. Uh, I recently gave a wrong answer. Imagine that. I made a mistake. There was a study that showed that if you take aspirin at bedtime, it has a beneficial effect on your blood pressure. And I said, no, that was probably just people who remember to take their, bed, uh, their medications at bedtime. But the study actually showed if you take uh, aspirin at bedtime, it does lower your blood pressure somehow more. Uh, natural things that you can use to lower blood pressure are hibiscus tea and glutamate, glutamic acid, which you can buy at the natural food stores. So um, here is a place that I discovered recently that has macrobiotic meals called Backstage Cafe. And the address is um, 35 Westbourne Parkway, and that's at the intersection where the old Thomas Cadillac used to be, or Daniel's Cadillac, Daniel's Thomas, and Albany Avenue. And it's really a very nice complex. It's in there with uh, University of Hartford's drama section. Uh, the problem with these macro meals is that they tend to be all pastas and all wheat pastas. But I did get some, uh, one, I think chickpea something or other, and I think I got a quinoa something or other. So that is uh, Backstage Cafe at Westbourne Parkway and Albany Avenue at the University of Hartford. What do I start my patients on when I treat for high blood pressure? When I treat for high blood pressure, I start with generic Lotrel, Benazapril with uh, Norvasc, Amlodipine. And uh, it's a pill combination. It's simple. It does run the risk of creating cough in patients. Uh, I didn't say you would develop cough. Maybe 10, 15% of people will develop cough but it's a fairly cheap generic, and it is the most effective way to start the treatment of high blood pressure. So I start with that combination at 2.5 slash 10, even if they have like 150 over 90 to 100. And then uh, you can go up on that, and then you can add the diuretic. The diuretic of choice for me is torsamide, not hydrochlorothiazide. Torsamide, because it has a little bit better effect on potassium, and that which, lowers, uh, that which raises potassium tends to reduce the incidence of 
diabetes, which occurs because of the use of diuretics. Interestingly, uh, that m leads me to talk about A1C. A1C is the preferred diabetic measurement. And I would like you to uh, get your A1C measured along with your magnesium. Your A1C should be 5.5 or less, unless you're a diabetic, then that gets it down a little bit low for you. Um, A1C 5.5, magnesium 2.1 or higher, but still in range. Uh, subtract the good cholesterol from the total cholesterol. That number should be 90. That's called non-HDL cholesterol. I am not yet measuring apolipoprotein A and B levels, but if I were, I would want an apolipoprotein A minus B of 80. Um, uh, get your um, um, lipoprotein little a measured, which can be treated with over-the-counter carnitine, but also with niacin. I want to start using more niacin in my practice because it has very many beneficial effects if you can get patients past the side effects. Got the two-minute high sign. Time to move on. What to do if you get chest pain and you go to the emergency room? The new standard of care, as far as I am concerned, is to not do the nuclear stress test, but to do the multi-slice CT scan right then, because that is the most definitive test. It shows the most information. St. Francis Hospital has the 128-slice CT scan, which, by the way, you should ask if it's timed to the EKG so that you get a minimum dose of radiation. Remember, there is radiation whether you get the nuclear stress test the next morning or whether you get the multi-slice CT scan tonight, but I think it would be most efficient to go straight for the evaluation of those patients with the possible heart attack issue, to go straight to multi-slice CT scan, and I recommend St. Francis because it has the best in the area. I'm sure at some point Hartford and John Dempsey will catch up. But right now, the place to go is St. Francis, and so I encourage you to do that. Uh, there is a, uh, an, a 21 gene RSS assay that costs $3,500 for the detection or for the prediction of who is most likely to develop cancer. Um, there is also a new blood test uh, for detecting cancers. Oh, yes, uh, RS gene is one. This one's called SYNE1 and FOXE1, and those tests uh, are good for uh, seeing who's going to develop cancer. Here's a picture that was sent to me by my friend J.T. Guy, and basically what it shows is that they put uh, the, the picture, uh, the, the cloth on stairs, and if you climbed on the keyboard, it looked like a piano. If you climbed on it, it made notes. Uh, that increased people walking up the stairs as opposed to using the escalator by 60%. Well, I hope uh, you've enjoyed today's show. A good day and God bless you all. I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center, 549-3444 if you have any questions. And I'd like to thank Patrick and Jatu Hundley for their help in today's show. Uh, see you next time. Hey!